Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Sarah Lindbergh, a naturopathic physician at Sound Naturopathic Clinic, and I'm here to talk about optimal health. I want to talk about how to tone something that I like to call the big five, which are five systems in the body that need to be in tip-top shape so that we can have optimal health. We will go over what the importance of the organs are, a naturopathic approach to these systems, and how to take action so that you can keep going on your journey to feel your best. So what is optimal health? The definition is the ability for the body to function at the most efficiency without affecting social well-being and resulting in the absence of dis-ease. There are a ton of factors that are involved with this, so it may mean adding valuable tools or vitamins, eliminating what doesn't serve the body, and deeper integration of the mind and soul. Optimal health is defined differently for everybody though, but this is what I challenge people. So my goal is to help people achieve their health goals so that they can pursue their passion and purpose. And if people can do that, that is when they have reached their optimal health. You can agree to disagree. So what are the big five? The main causes of all this disease has to do with one or all of these systems. Most of the time it has to do with the adrenals. The adrenals are little glands that sit on your kidneys that deal with stress most of the time. So when you get to the core issue, the rest of the body or the systems will heal as well. So addressing these systems makes it so that you are preventing disease. Once we go through these systems one by one, you will be educated on the value of these systems and why you need to care about them too. So we mentioned what the adrenals are and what they secrete is something called cortisol, which is your stress hormone, okay? And so when cortisol is increased, your stress is most likely increased as well. So nowadays, stress can mean sitting in traffic, having a busy and high responsibility job, taking care of family members, standing in line in the bank, or watching a scary movie. We're constantly living in this high stress life that we have never been doing before. Because of this excess stimulation in today's world, everyone is releasing cortisol all the time. In the old days of hunting and gathering, cortisol was only released when running from a bear. Our bodies have not adapted to this. So that is why our adrenals are causing so much issue in today's world and why I will mention adrenals and all the rest of these systems that we talk about today. It is related with everything. So what cortisol in the body does is take the energy from the body in order to keep running. In order to do that, cortisol decreases sex hormones, overworks the heart, suppresses the immune system, stops digestion, and heightens the cyclic thoughts in your mind at night. So what this means is that you cannot digest well. You are open to infections, you will have low quality sleep, and you will have sex hormone imbalances, even causing infertility. In other words, when cortisol is high, nothing else is healing. The adrenals need to be regulated to help all of these things. You will not achieve optimal health without regulating your adrenal glands. So how you can regulate these glands are, number one is sleep. When you are sleeping well, the melatonin in your brain is able to counteract the cortisol and so your cortisol is actually able to be built back up again in a productive way. So you have to be able to get quality sleep so that cortisol can rebuild itself in a productive way and melatonin can make it so that that can happen. Eating protein in the morning 
is also really helpful for the adrenal glands because the adrenals get burnt out off of carbohydrates or simple carbohydrates and sugar. So those sort of foods, the sugar and the processed foods and the simple carbohydrates have to be eliminated. But eating protein in the morning really helps to kind of readjust the adrenal glands. Doing your stress management techniques, such as meditation, qigong, exercising, journaling, can also be very helpful for your adrenal glands to re-regulate themselves as well. So digestion. There are three ways the digestive system needs to be addressed. These include stomach acids, which is coming from here, the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas all have to be fully functioning and working at their best. And the intestines need to be addressed and making sure that they are functioning correctly. This is your small intestine and then this is your large intestine right here. So with the stomach, the pH needs to be optimal. The pH is usually a little bit on the acidic side in the stomach, but when there's a lot of cortisol, you are not getting enough acid being made in the stomach, which means the whole rest of the tract and the digestion is going to be wrong, okay? We'll talk about this a little bit um, sooner. The other thing is with the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, the, there needs to be enough enzymes being secreted from, from these organs, and what enzymes do is also help with the digestion of certain foods. So the digestive system is either turned on or off. It cannot work at the same time as stress or the cortisol levels. So when the digestive system is not activated, but you eat food, there isn't enough hydrochloric acid, which is that acid that we were talking about in the stomach to digest. It also, because of this, is not stimulating the pancreas to release bicarb, which helps with addressing the pH of the food that you just ate. And it's not secreting enough enzymes to help with the digestion as well either. So by the time the food gets to the large intestine, there should only be bile and water. But when there is food that gets into large intestine, the immune system that is located in the large intestine becomes overactive and produces antibodies to the foods that are in the large intestine. This results in inflammation, bloating, pain, rashes, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, brain fog, or something else. This overactive immune system plus the hazardous environmental material or pesticides getting into the intestines from the food that you're eating can actually cause the separation of intestinal tissue causing leaks. When you eat food that goes into your intestines for the last bit of digestion, that means that you are not digesting this food, you are not getting the nutrients and the whole microbiome and bacteria that's in your gut is not being able to do its job, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, something happened with the recording there. So when you're constantly causing this irritation to the large intestines, the uh, junctions in your intestines are supposed to be very, very tight. But when you're constantly getting food and inflammation and pesticides in that uh, intestine, the, those tight junctions, that tight um, intestine actually starts to create gaps and holes. And we call this leaky gut and it cannot reseal uh, without um, help and without decreasing inflammation. So we have to actually take um, initiative to help heal that intestine or else you can get all of those symptoms that I've mentioned before. And you're not going to be able to fully digest 
without being able to rest. So the whole cause of all of this happening in the digestion is stress and high cortisol. When there is high cortisol, you are not digesting. So you can be causing leaks in the intestine and you cannot heal that until you decrease the amount of stress so that you can digest properly and decrease the amount of inflammation that is going on in the body. When you're able to heal the gut back up, the immune system can re-regulate itself and the body can have the ability to heal again. So here are the goals of healing the digestive system. Decrease the amount of inflammation. Decrease the toxic load, that's the pesticides, the processed foods. And giving the stomach some more acid. Sometimes when we can't completely address the amount of stress, we can help with giving some hydrochloric acid the, and so that we are digesting the food. We have to increase the amount of enzymes. So sometimes we do have to help out the pancreas and the gallbladder to um, give your body enzymes so that the food can be digested the time it gets to the large intestine. The intestinal lining also has to be healed and making sure that the good bacteria in our gut or our microbiome or microflora in the intestines is working properly for us. Okay, and here are some things that are listed below that can help with the digestive system to heal itself as well. So the immune system, it's a super complex system that I will only simplify for optimizing health purposes only. The immune system is our body's military, our police force and construction crew combined. It does a lot of work for us. It keeps our bodies from microscopic bugs that are also trying to hurt us while repairing our injuries. So we talked a little bit about the immune system already in the digestive um, system. And so I know that you're getting a lot of information about the immune system right now and how everything is already related and intertwining with each other. So I won't get too much into the immune system. However, I do want to bring up something that is very interesting. There are studies done that talk about how immunoglobulin A, which is that IgA, is found in the gut mostly, and it is depleted with, with high cortisol. And immunoglobulin A is what helps our bodies fight against viruses. So there was a study that also showed that meditating or finding 10 minutes to per day to intentionally feel unlimited bliss and happy and, and um, stressless was actually able to increase their IgA levels by 50% after one week. It doesn't take much. All you have to do is be able to decrease your stress and you can regulate your immune system so that it can fight off um, bugs such as viruses. One last thing about the immune system that I want to talk about is um, that when our immune system is constantly working to protect our bodies and we are in constant stress and never able to rest or get ourselves out of stress, the body is going to start to alter the circuits and start to work incoherently. When this happens, the body will start to fight itself and when there's constant stress and constant healing to be done to the physical body, the immune system will start to rebel and not work effectively. This is called autoimmunity or the immune system fighting against itself. It really, really is hard to undo this. It is almost impossible to brush out the kinks in the system. So why autoimmunity happens as a baby is unknown, but some autoimmunity diseases are self-inflicted later on in life. You have to act now to, to prevent that from actually happening by taking care of your stress and your immune system. And here are some ways uh, written below to keep your immune system healthy. 
nutrition is also important for our bodies and can help with developing healthy habits, giving our bodies uh, nutrients that it needs in order to function properly and act as a symptom relief. When our bodies are given the right nutrients and vitamins it needs, the biochemical pathways can function properly, minerals for the um, balance of our cells are optimal, and the immune system can work optimally. So hormones. I'm going to get right into the importance of hormones in this uh, next slide here um, by talking a little bit about each one of these hormones. So thyroid hormone is responsible for metabolism. This means it can regulate our bowels, it can be cause of headaches, temperature regulation, blood flow, hair distribution, uh, and not having the thyroid regulated optimally could be the reason why you cannot lose weight or gain weight depend, despite your efforts. There are many ways that the thyroid hormone could go awry though. It could be that there aren't enough nutrients in your body to make an active version of TSH, uh, or your thyroid could be under-functioning because of cortisol, or your thyroid could be over-functioning. Estrogen and progesterone are high in females predominantly, but still play a major factor in men. Estrogen and progesterone play roles in the quality of periods, heart palpitation, weight, brain fog, migraines, cognition, fertility, uh, libido, and also aging. The problem with estrogen and progesterone is when they get out of balance, it's when you can get um, mood swings and sweating. So one of the most common ways that hormones can get out of balance is due to exogenous estrogen, which means that environmental toxins are, such as pesticides are actually mimicking estrogen in the body. And so these toxins build up in the body and they're not able to be addressed by the immune system because they mimic estrogen and can cause hormone imbalances, which is causing absolute chaos in, in some people's bodies. So avoiding these estrogen mimickers, such as pesticides, should be an important part of your life, such as eliminating plastics and, and BPAs. Testosterone is a very commonly uh, decreased hormone in males and females, actually. So testosterone helps to regulate energy, a libido, bone and muscle mass, moodiness, hair growth, weight regulation, and function of sex organs. A lot of people either have too much or too little testosterone and they don't even know it. You do not have to just get steroid injections in order to reap the benefits of getting your testosterone checked and being able to get optimal levels of testosterone to help with overall vitality. LH, which is luteinizing hormone, and FSH, which is follicle stimulating hormone, just help with sex organ maturation. And vitamin D is a hormone. It functions completely as a hormone in the body and helps with immune system regulation, bone density, calcium regulation, energy, keeps muscles and nerves healthy, and your brain healthy. I'm kind of making up the statistic, but 95% of my patients are deficient in vitamin D by a lot. I don't even, this is one of the numbers on a lab that I don't necessarily um, trust looking at. And this is a number that I optimize all the time. You could have um, an increase of energy, stronger immune system and prevent broken bones, have a better memory if your vitamin D level is monitored and gotten to an optimal level. So all of these hormones have to be delicately balanced and kept under a close eye by a medical professional. When they are working synergistically together though, health tends to excel exponentially. So toxins are built up in our bodies from the chemical complex world that we're living in. Our GI tract is constantly exposed to toxins, endotoxins, which are constantly being produced in the body and also toxins to which we are exposed through air, water, food, stress, illnesses, all, uh, et cetera. All of these add to our body's burdens of toxins, which if not eliminated can do, um, can store 
uh, be stored in the, in the tissues of the body. And it's really hard to get them out of there. So toxins are exponentially becoming more prominent in our society, such as the air we breathe, the cleaning products we use, the foods that we eat, the off-gassing from buildings, and the water we drink. Our bodies are extremely efficient with eliminating toxins, though, through all of these organs. Our liver, lungs, kidneys, skin, lymphatic system, however, still need some help along the way. I usually recommend to replenish your organs and get rid of the excess buildup of toxins that have not been eliminated through the organs. That accumulation that builds up has exceeded the rate of elimination your organs can handle result in symptoms such as fatigue, muscle soreness, brain fog, stomach pains, debilitating hangovers, constipation, diarrhea, chills, insomnia, flu-like symptoms, and headaches. So when you're allowing the body to catch up to each of these organ systems and heal, you will actually prevent your body from getting sick, possibly cancer, autoimmune disease, prevent um, aging, um, hormone dysregulation, and you actually can decrease your need for a certain amount of medications. And one organ that I really want to point out is your lymphatics. So your tonsils in the back of your mouth are actually, um, they, they are part of your lymph system. However, another interesting fact that is that your tonsils are actually um, helpful for your um, immune system in that it is your first line of defense for uh, and it sort of acts like a, um, a vaccine. So what, what the tonsils do is when you ingest a food, it is monitoring what is in your environment and can put a tag on cer certain things that are causing um, inflammation in the body or may not be good for the body. But this can also be a bad thing because when the tonsils are putting tags on all these foods, it's also causing inflammation all the going all the way down your digestive tract. So that can also be another reason why your digestive tract could be having some problems. So techniques to aid in the detox and optimizing organ systems is number one, nutrition. With food, you can always be constantly doing some sort of detoxification and really helping to get your uh, organs to be functioning well. Another way that you can be detoxing every day is actually drinking an adequate amount of water. So you should be drinking at least half your body weight in ounces. You can be drinking too much water, so be careful of that. If you are exercising, I usually recommend adding about eight ounces of water per 15 minutes of exercise. Sleep is the only time that your body is able to relax. So being able to get an adequate amount of sleep, you are also able to heal. So something called contrast hydrotherapy that I use all the time with patients, and it's free, is alternating hot and cold. So when you put, you can put a folded towel, hot towel on your abdomen, for about five to 10 minutes, and then put a cold uh, face towel on your abdomen for about five minutes, and then keep alternating, alternating and just make sure that you end on cold. That is an excellent way to help to detox the body. Castor oil packs. You are not eating the castor oil. That is not um, actually safe for you at all. It has poison in it. But Castor oil on your skin and especially on your liver with a heat pack over it is very detoxifying for the liver. So talk to your medical provider to make sure that that is safe for you, but castor oil packs tend to be a very gentle and lovely way to detox. Making sure that you're getting a good quality multivitamin is really important and also exercise. So exercise is actually a, a helpful because it moves the lymph, which is your immune system, throughout your whole body and getting it, getting it cycled through and making, it sh making sure that nothing is getting stuck or stagnant in your body. 
I usually recommend doing some sort of detox program um, at least once a year. I like to do four times a year if possible, it's just so that you can make sure that your organs are working optimally all the time. This may or may not seem like a lot of information being given to you guys. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of angles and considerations that you have to make when thinking about your health, but know that everybody is different and everybody has different needs and manifest different imbalances. It is up to you to take control of your own health and do what you need to do for your own health goals. Just know that you can change anything. There are unlimited possibilities and options for you. The trick is not to keep making the same choices as you did before that are causing the problems within you. Past habits, thoughts, and feelings are an addiction. So it starts with staying in the present moment, making one choice that is for the betterment of you, and then another one, and then another one, and so on. So what can you do to keep those healthy habits being formed and take responsibility for your own health? One of my favorite topics to talk about um, is the idea of uh, homeostasis versus homeodynamics and how this relates to your healing process right now and getting optimal health. So the body in medical school was taught to reach homeostasis. Your body is always trying to get to this homeostasis. Homeostasis means that it's trying to get into a stagnant balance. And I just th think that that's a very funny concept because it came from scientists who are studying dead human cadavers. Or, or, and those are um, very stagnant because they are not living. But that is not what the body does. If the body was searching for homeostasis and it finally reached it, that would mean that there would be stagnation. There wouldn't be growth or pushing the limit. So what I like to think about is the idea of homeodynamics because the body is alive. It's constantly wavering and teetering on one side and then another. So it's like the idea of yin and yang, the good and evil, the evil and the good. So homeodynamics represents to me vitality and radiance and health and the forgiveness of yourself while striving for excellence. So homeodynamics brings to light the adapting to the environment and that to me is optimal health. So last thing I will say is that I know that the human's um, body is the most advanced technology that there is out there. It can heal itself and it wants to heal itself. It just has to be given some tools sometimes in order to do that. So give your body permission to heal. Give your mind encouragement to heal. You deserve this optimal health. So thank you so much. And I appreciate you listening to this video.